apologize for the difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. So Frank Miller was now up to the plate. Nicholas gets ready to deal once more. And that's going to go towards right field. An easy slide in out. That's going to put Frank Noto out. Brings up number 30, Jeremy Torres. So Jason Torres is now up to the plate. Guys, keep a track at home. The score is 3 0 in favor of Team USA. We are in the bottom of the third inning. It's going to go for ball number one. <coughs> Nicholas gets ready to deal, and he DD does. That's going to go for strike number one. So the count is currently 1-1. One, one. So a 1-1 one, one count, what will it be this time? Maybe nothing, it might be automatically an out, it might not be. Oh, it might go to first base. He's gonna run towards second base. Will he be able to get there in time? And indeed he does. So already. The double for Torres brings up the third baseman, Ty Panarello. So Jason Torres already on second base. <coughs> Nicholas deals once more. Going to be a ball for Ty. He deals, and that's going to be a foul ball. That's going to go over the net. <laughs> and it's going to hit everywhere in the entire stadium. <laughs> Nicholas has his eyes set. He pitches. He's going to go for strike number one for Ty. Hey, so Nicholas has a lot more to worry about than just Ty. He also has Jason Torres again on second base. And if you can see Jason, he's ready to move towards third base right now. He's going to take any opportunity. He inches closer. That's going to be for another ball for Ty. So the count currently three balls, one strike. Looks to be like a foul ball there. Nicholas pitches. He deals. That's going to be another foul ball. Boy, let me tell you something. Nicholas has to be lucky that's a foul ball because I just saw, I just saw Jason just power getting ready to go to third base. It felt like he was just going to get there in an instant. Like just the speed he brought coming off of that plate. That could have easily been either or no. Stolen base or just a guaranteed third. He deals once more. That's going to be a walk. So a walk for Ty. Puts two men on the diamond. One on first base, one on second base. It's Andres Belogas. It's Andres Belogas is now up to the plate. This team USA has a little bit of a laugh there. 
And looks like that is going to be a foul ball. Andres, in the last inning, was one of those many stolen bases. So he was able to steal second base from Nicholas. The question is, can he do it again? Will he get the opportunity? We're about to find out as Nicholas deals once more. That's going to go for potentially a ball. Nicholas deals. Going to be another ball. This can turn into loaded bases, fully loaded bases easily. It depends here. It's going to be the third ball for Andres. If he gets that fourth, we are looking at fully loaded bases once again. Nicholas has already had to deal with that twice so far this game, nearly three times. He's ready to deal once more. And that's going to go towards the right side of the field. He runs. Make that four runs for the USA. Andres gets to first base, and Ty manages to get to third base. But how about Jason Torres managing to get the run, putting USA up by four runs to Canada zero? They are building some real momentum right now and right now it doesn't look like Canada is going to be able to catch up I mean there's still plenty of baseball left ladies and gentlemen but right now it does not look good for them right now you see there's a conversation up on the pitcher's mound number 55 Riley Ugwe seeing them on my right side he's getting ready So as Team Canada disperses back to their positions, head coach looked like he had to talk with his team there after allowing another run. So, so far in every inning, so far the USA has allowed, or excuse me, Canada has allowed at least one run on the USA. One in the first inning, two in the second, and now already one in the third. I mean, let me tell you something, right now it does not look good for Canada. That can all change with a simple double play. Again, he does have an out as Nicholas gets ready to deal. Again, number 25, Charles Mondlin is on the is on the batting plate. Once again, we'd like to remind you we have men on first and third base. Nicholas gets ready. It's going to be a ground ball. It's going to go towards the left side of the diamond. And that's going to be five. Five runs already for the USA's. We now have a man on first base and a man on second base. So now number 55, Riley Lee, as we mentioned earlier, is now up to the plate. I mean, these batters are getting just what they want. They're getting nice, good ground balls. They're not allowing the ball to fly into the air at all, as that's going to be strike number one for Riley. Pitches, deals. It's going to be a foul ball. I mean, you gotta imagine Riley's feeling frustrated right now, already allowing five runs in the game, and we're not even halfway through. You gotta feel like he's frustrated right now, but that can all easily change. That's gonna be a fly out and an easy catch, which is gonna end the bottom of the third inning. So we'll be right back with the top of the fourth.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we are ready to begin the top of the fourth inning. Once again, once again, the score is US Team USA on top with five runs to Canada's zero. Now, if we're going to be talking about some storylines as we're about halfway through, as we're about halfway through this game, it's really been a tale of two stories. I feel like for this team. I mean, right now, USA, they just look good on all fronts, on batting, on pitching, everything. Lucas, I mean, Lucas Roberts right now, he is showing why he is a D1 prospect, only allowing one man on the base throughout the entirety of this game so far. It's going to be strike number one for number 36. Looks like we have a timeout. From Team USA. But back to what I was saying, it's been a tale of two teams so far. I mean, while Team USA has had everything go right for them so far, you can't say the same thing for Team Canada. Like I said, they have a goose egg in the runs column so far. And I mean, their pitcher Nicholas, he's just, I mean, he's allowed a lot of stolen bases. Again, allowed five runs on him in only three innings so far. It's not looking good for him right now. There's still plenty of game left, don't get me wrong, and this could easily change, but, I mean, as it's look as it's looking so far, I mean, and again, Tyler, another strike. So, so far, the count looks like it's 2-1. Excuse me, 1-2. Lucas looks. He's ready. He pitches. That's going to be another ball. And it's not even just Lucas himself. I mean, these, this entire team has great coordination. Twice already so far this, twice already so far this game, we've seen the shortstop catch the ball and just get it immediately to the first baseman, not allowing. I mean, that's one reason why we haven't seen that many people on bases because the shortstop and the first baseman have such great connection right now that they're just able to get the ball from one to the, one end to the other so quickly. That's going to be the first walk for Lucas in this game. Number 36, Tyler Alman getting the walk after four balls. Could this be what Canada needs? Like I said, it's only the second time so far this game that they have gotten a man on base. Could we make it a three-peat right here? Lucas, he deals. And a stolen base for... Tyler Amlin. So I mean, <laughs> I mean, so far Lucas does not look like the same as he did for those first three innings right now. Already, S very uncharacteristic things that we've been seeing from him so far. A stolen base, a man on base. I know they seem like small things, but just from what we've seen from him so far, it's just uncharacteristic. That's going to be two balls already. Have a little discussion here up on the plate. All right, Lucas needs to Lucas needs to get the rhythm back going. I mean, he's already allowed stolen base, a lot of man on base. That needs to be as far as he lets it. He's getting sloppy with his pitches right now. I believe that's the third or the fourth pitch in a row or within a very short time span of a pitch going to the ground. So, I mean, he's getting sloppy with his pitches right now. He needs to get that going. He needs to get back to the form that he was in the first three innings if they want to end this game quickly. That's going to be another run, another walk for Lucas. So Lucas did not allow a single walk in the first three innings. In just this inning alone, he's allowed two. And we now have scoring positions on first and second base. 
as they're going to have a discussion up on the mound. Just want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, even though Canada seems to be getting a little momentum heading to them right now, they're still down by five runs, zero to Team USA's five. But it can all change fairly quickly. Like I said, Lucas has already allowed two walks so far, one of them being a stolen base. So, I mean, things can change really quickly. We've seen a lot of crazier things happen in this great sport of baseball. Number 20, Jack Lewis is now up to the plate. Lucas deals. That's going to go to strike number one. All right, so Lewis getting back to what he does best, and that's getting strikes. He's got a couple strikeouts already on the night. See if he can add another one to that tally. That's going to be strike number two. So he's only one strike away from adding another one, like I said, to that tally of strikeouts that he does have so far tonight. Keep an eye out for the two basemen on first and second. It's going to be ball number one. You can tell Lucas is really focused right now on just getting this strikeout. I mean, yeah, he's turning around to see who's on the second base, but, I mean, he's not worried about it right now. That's the second ball of the night. Because he knows that if he could get this strikeout right now, Lucas, he looks behind, he deals, and that's going to be a foul ball. Lucas is surveying the area right now. I think he's starting to realize that he might have to maybe get another out, get an out in a different way. I mean, so far this inning has not been good for him to him right now, but he has a chance right here to get a strikeout on Jack Lewis. However, we've already seen one stolen base so far tonight, at least just in this inning alone. Lewis wants to make sure that does not happen again. He looks behind. He deals. That's going to be another foul ball. So the count is 2-2. Two, two. Lewis, he looks behind behind once more he deals that's going to be another foul ball I mean it's not like Jack I mean it's not like Jack Lewis is just you know waiting to get to get a walk out I mean he's swinging the ball he wants to send that thing flying he wants to not just give himself a chance but his teammates also a chance and it's even more advantageous because right now there are no outs so far in this inning and that's going and that's going to go all the way to the ground that's going to be can Canada get their first run in and indeed they do put one on the board for Canada
Number 22, Logan McDonald. So we just had a lot happen there. Tyler Amlin managed to get the first one in for Canada. Jack Lewis managed to get a single. And how about Cameron Boyer managing to get to second base as well? So the tides might be turning for Canada right now, ladies and gentlemen. As Logan McDonald is up to the plate, and we get another stolen base. So Cameron Boyer manages to get the stolen base now on third. I've been talking about this throughout most of the game, but it's really been with the opposite team, and that is while one batter may not be able to get what he wants out of the swing, he's definitely getting something out of it as his teammates are able to take advantage with these stolen bases, as we've just seen here right now with Cameron Bauer. <coughs> he tries to throw it to get Jason Lewis potentially out, but in my opinion, I'm more worried about that third baseman right now. I mean, they already got one run in for Canada. You don't want to make it two. He deals. It's going to be a strike. Throws it. Uh. Lewis gets ready. He deals. That's going to be. It's going to be a change up and a strikeout but so that's one out for USA now number 18 Coleman Scheiss is now up to the plate Jack Lewis and all that was able to manage to get to second base Gonna be strike number one. Move around, move around. Seems to be action. Seems to be action in the U.S. bullpen. Not sure what's going on, but seems to be something going on. As uh, that's gonna be, it's gonna be ball number one for Coleman Scheiss. Lucas is ready. Oh, and there's an. That's going to be a. That's going to be a slider for a ball. Lucas is ready. He looks behind. He deals. That's going to be a walk. That's going to be a walk for Coleman Scheiss. Now we have a situation. Now we have a situation of loaded bases. This is very foreign to Lucas. I mean, I mentioned it before this inning. He only allowed one one man to be on a base. Now he's dealing with loaded bases. So, I mean, things can happen. If he can get the double play, then that's automatically then things change and then they can get the momentum back going as we now have number 24 Frankie Best is now up to the plate Lucas deals 
That's going to be a slider for ball number one. You can hear the crowd behind me. They are ecstatic for this game right now as Lucas gets ready. What's he going to bring to the table? He's going to bring a fastball for a foul. It goes into the grandstand. So the count is currently 1-1 right now for Frankie Best. Lucas in position. Once again, we are dealing with loaded bases, fully loaded bases right now. What's going to happen is Lucas deals. It's going to be a fastball, and it's going to go all the way. It's going gonna, gonna to drop for a base hit, and that's going to put two runs on the board for Canada. Or, excuse me, make it one run on the board as Canada now has two on the board. Both coming in this RBI inning. Uh, once again, in a situation of loaded bases. <laughs> Number 22, Aiden, is now up to the plate. And just like that, it seems like the USA's big lead is slowly starting to crumble. As he deals, and that's going to go for a foul ball for the fastball. Like I said, the USA's big lead, it's in jeopardy right now. I, saw, I know they still got three runs on the team on Canada, but, I mean, we just saw what happened. I mean, for the first three innings, we thought that the United States team would just be able to just cruise to a win. But right now, things have quickly changed just at the top of the fourth inning. That's going to be another foul ball for the slider. Everyone is silent as they wait to see what Lucas does. It's going to be strike number one, slider. Strike three. Excuse me. So two appearances for Aiden Styles, two strikeouts for him as well. Again, we're still dealing with the situation of loaded bases. So right now, Lucas wants to make sure that he could just get the strikeout. It's going to be strike number one. Well, he's a third of the way there. Lucas, he gets in position. He throws. It's going to go for ball number two. Number one, let's see what Lucas does. That's going to go for the slider. For ball number three. <laughs> so right now, I think the best scenario is for Lucas right now, if he can get the strikeout, as we're about to find out. And, well, the worst case scenario just happened, and it's the same case scenario, which is another one for Canada, making three in the inning. And, once again, because Lucas was able...
to get the walk, we are once again in a situation of loaded bases. What I was going to say is the best situation that can happen is that, you know, he gets the fly ball, and then at least if he gets an out, well, yes, that might sacrifice a run. At least it would get the inning to be done in a relative. It's going to be a foul ball. Lucas stares into Ryan King. It's going to be in a ball. So the count is now 1 1 for Ryan King. And Lucas is trying to change up his game. He's trying to be unpredictable as he adds another slider. So back to back sliders, but all for naught. That's going to be the. F it's going to be another ball. But he's trying to change it up. He's trying to change it up between fastball, sliders, and he's not trying to be predictable. One minute he's having two sliders, the next he has a one slider and a one fastball. Lucas deals. It's going to be another foul ball. Lucas deals, okay. and that's the third okay. foul ball in a row. Swinger, I mean, Ryan, right now he's being very aggressive. Right now, he, you know, he wants to get this going. Steals. And it's gonna go all the way to center. That's gonna make it two, that's gonna make it four runs and five. Now we have a tied game, ladies and gentlemen. The score was zero to five in the beginning of the top of the fourth. Now we have a tied game. How things can change in just one inning. My goodness. Setting up Tyler Amlin perfectly here. While he does have the advantage of loaded. As it seems like we're going to have a pitching change. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are now back at the top of the fourth inning. And let me tell you something. Since the last time we went to commercial break, a lot has changed. While Canada had a goose egg in the runs column compared to the United to U Team USA's five, that has now changed completely as both teams are now tied with five runs. And we do have a pitcher change for Team USA as well. Let's see if that can bring the momentum back to Team USA's way. Pitcher is Noah Lucia. Rocking number 27, that's going to be strike number one. So Noah coming in relief for Lucas. Let me tell you something, we were, watch, we were watching this guy, you know, as we were going, that's going to be strike number two, and that's going to go right into what I was saying. I mean, we were watching him here from the booth, and, you know, while we were on our break, and this kid has a cannon of an arm, and he is right now using that to his advantage. Two strikes already. No deals. It's going to be a foul ball. Almost out of the stadium entirely. Once again, this is the sixth annual The World Comes to Palm Beaches, being held at the ballpark of Palm Beaches here in Palm Beach, Florida. And folks, we got plenty more action coming. We got plenty more action coming. We got games coming tomorrow and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We got two broadcasts for both Friday and Saturday, both happening at 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. respectively. And then we have our finale, which is, I believe, at either 12 or 3 p.m. I will get that confirmation later on in the broadcast. But right now, the only confirmation is that Noah is going to throw the fastball for the strikeout. And you can see that Tyler is frustrated by that. And that's going to do it for the bottom of the fourth Every inning. We'll be back, or excuse me, the top of the fourth inning. We'll be back with the bottom of the fourth inning. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are at the bottom of the fourth inning where the score is now tied at 5-5 between Team Canada and Team USA. 
We're just about to end warm-ups here. Number 23, Dwayne Cartwright. We head back to the top of the starting lineup. Gets ready to bat. Dwayne has had a pretty successful night so far, giving Team USA their first run of the night. And while Team USA, they did not have a good showing on defense. I mean, their offense right here, that's going to be strike number one. Going to go for a ball for Dwayne. That's going to go towards center field, all the way to the outfielder. He's going to throw it, and he's going to get the single, that being Dwayne. So Dwayne hits a deep one all the way towards center field, and that's going to allow him to get the single. Tyler Jones is now up towards the plate. Short stop for Team USA. Like I was saying, I mean, this offense for Cam for Team USA is still potent. They've allowed, they've gotten a run in every single inning so far tonight. So, I mean, this score can always easily change right now. But I mean, right now it's looking good. Dwayne's already on base right now as he throws a fastball, and that's gonna be a fly out. And an easy out. It's going to be the first one of the night on Tyler Jones. A fly out caught by the center outfielder. David Alvarez, number 44, designated hitter, is now up to the plate. We still have Dwayne Cartwright on first base. It's going to be strike number one. It's a good fastball there by Nicholas. Nicholas deals. Throws a fastball. It's going to be a ball. Nicholas has been throwing a lot of fastballs so far. I believe that's going to make it three or four in a row. It's going to be closer to a slider there, and that's going to be the second ball of four. Mr. Alvarez. Nicholas Diaz. And that's going to pop all the way towards the left side of the field. That's going to be another out. So two, so two flyouts back to back. First one by Tyler, Tyler Jones. Second by David Alvarez. Now the first baseman, Cater McCormick, is now up to the plate. Let me tell you something, Nicholas, it seems like he's figuring something out right here. Nicholas is figuring something out. He hasn't really allowed a lot of just these flyouts or even strikeouts at all. I mean, meanwhile, he's already allowed two flyouts. We have potential for a stolen base. And indeed, we do. Dwayne Cartwright manages to get the stolen base and move himself up to second base. So already an error in what seems to be already a pretty good bottom of the fourth inning. That's going to be strike number one for Carter. Nicholas Diaz has the slider. 
If the catcher drops the ball, it's going to count as a ball. So one out, three balls in. What's going to happen? Is Nicholas going to allow him to walk, or is he going to try to get him to swing and miss? We're about to find out as he deals. There's a fastball. It's going to be another ball. Nicholas Deals throws the fastball. That's going to be strike number two. Currently the score is 2-2. Fastball turns into a foul ball. As we have some difficulties with the camera, let's give us one moment. Sorry about the technical difficulties, but what just happened there was three in a row for a for a fly ball being caught. So quickly the tide is changing for Canada as we'll be back with the top of the fifth inning. The score is Canada 5, USA 5. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the top of the fifth inning. Now, if you're just tuning in after taking a little bit of a hiatus, you might be thinking to yourself, why is there a different pitcher for, for Team America? That's because there was a pitcher change last inning as Lucas Roberts was filled in, has been subbed in for Noah Lucia. As Noah pitches, throws a curveball, that's going to go for a foul ball. Noah gets ready and deals. It's going to be another foul ball. The batter being number 16. The catcher, Cameron Boyer. So the count is currently 0-2. Off of those two fouls for Cameron. As Noah gets ready to deal once more. The fastball. That's going to be thrown all, it's going to be thrown all over an easy catch. For 
the outfielder, and that's going to put one out already for Canada. So it looked like a promising swing was all for not as Team USA was able to play great defense and no catch that immediately. Canada. Number 20, Jack Lewis. Let's go, Jack. He just steals a fastball, and that's going to go for a foul ball. Jack Lewis had a pretty good couple set of innings. While he didn't start off great, getting a couple outs early, he was able to bring home one of the five runs that Canada managed to muster up in the last inning. So, I mean, things can always change. Like I said, I mean, in one inning, this ball game is completely turned in over its head. As Noah deals with the fastball. The score is 2-0. The count is 2-0. Nolan wants to add a 1 to that strike count. No sets. He deals the fastball. And he gets what he wants, and he adds a strike. So some Noah's throws right now are like a cannon beam throw out of an arm. Oh, and here we go. Is this going to be another easy catch? And indeed it is. So Jack Lewis becomes the second victim of the inning to Noah Lewis as he throws, as he gets the pop out. We have a change to the lineup. Number 14 is now up to the plate. It's going to go for strike number one.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we apologize for all the technical difficulty. Let's get back to some good old-fashioned baseball action coming as we are now at the bottom of the fifth inning. Number 24, Frank Nato up to the plate. Nicholas Deals throws a fastball for, seems to be ball number one. Nicholas Deals swings and the misses for strike number one. Nicholas had a very good fourth inning, allowing that's going to be a foul ball. But like I mentioned before, Nicholas had a really good fourth inning, allowing three fly balls, which resulted in three straight outs, which is the first time that has happened for Canada so far this entire game. Can Nicholas make it three in a row? We're about to find out as he throws the fastball. But way too high. That's going to be ball number two. <coughs> Nicholas ready. Another fastball, but too high, making it ball number three. I mean, even though Nicholas had a really good fourth inning, I mean, it still wasn't without its flaws. He still allowed Dwayne Cartwright to get to first base, and then allowed him to steal second base as well. It looks like it's going to be a fly out heading towards the left side of the field, as you see two outer basemen go for it. But it's all for now, as it's a foul ball. So currently, three balls, one strike right now. Like I said before, I mean, Nicholas still isn't without his flaws, but let me tell you, I mean, right now he's really been turning it around for this team. That's going to be another foul ball. That's going to go over the net and into the stadium, into the grandstands. Nicholas gets ready, deals, fastball, third foul ball in a row. And the second one where this one looks like it went out of the stadium. <laughs> Nicholas deals. Now it looks like it's going to be a pop ball. Oh, and they drop it, but, and that drop is going to cost a potential out as Frank was able to get to first base. Now number 30, Jason Torres, is up to the plate. Nicholas Deals, that's going to be the fastball, and that's going to go for strike number one. You got a feel for Nicholas right there. I mean, that was basically a gimme out in that previous play and I mean an error by his team pretty much just cost that it's going to want to rectify that mistake and you saw he was able to do that by getting that first strike which was then followed up by the first ball for Jason Torres Nicholas looks to the first base 
He gets ready. Throws fastball and looks like that's going to go for a foul ball. That's going to go once again into the grandstand. So we're getting a lot of power in these bats from Team USA right now. Nicholas is ready. Throws too high. It's going to be ball number two. This feels like this is new for Nicholas right now. I mean, that's the fifth time that he's gotten a ball just in this inning alone. And that ball is due to the fact that he threw it too high. So he's going to have to lower that ball trajectory. That's going to make it three balls in a row. Nicholas looks at the first baseman. He looks at Jason. Throws. Fastball. That's going to give Jason the walk. So Jason Torres gets the walk and is now on first base. We now have two men on base, one on first, one on second, as number seven, Ty Donanello, is now up to the plate. Ty hasn't really had the best Really ha hasn't had really the best action so far. One of few players for Team America that hasn't been able to get a run so far. But, I mean, that can all change right here. I mean, we've seen this, especially with Nicholas, where maybe the batter doesn't get what he wants, but his teammates definitely do. Again, it's not discount all those stolen bases that we saw earlier in the game. Although we haven't seen those for the past two innings, minus that one by Dwayne Cartwright. Nicholas. Throws too high. That's going to go for ball number one for Ty. Seems to be the same story, just throwing it a little too high. Nicholas looks to second base. Keeps looking. Throws. There's the fastball. It's going to go for ball number two. Wait to see what Nicholas does. Fastball. Throws it to second base. Not enough. Close but no cigar as Frank Nodo is able to keep that second base. Nicholas throws. Fastball. All for not. Back-to-back -back walks for Nicholas. And something that's kind of crazy, ladies and gentlemen, just thinking about this right now. This is the first time all game that we've seen. No strikes, but a walk. So, as we see the catcher and the rest of the team, they go up to the pitcher's mound. But, I mean, right now, talking to, you know, everyone's going to talk to Nicholas, you know. They need to get things moving. They had a great fourth inning. The fifth inning has not gone the same way, but I mean, things can change. Still no outs so far on the night in the, bottom, in the bottom of the fifth inning. We do have one man on first base. We do have a man on second base. It looks to me right now... Because of all these loaded bases, folks, we have fully loaded bases right now. So, number 15, Andres Barley. This is what I was talking about, about this team, where it's like this offense 
for Team USA. He's just really able to just get to Nicholas right now. Whether it's just forcing walks or, you know, you know, causing the defense to make mistakes. Speaking of balls, it's going to be one ball already for Andres, but that's what I'm saying. The coordination between this team, especially on offense, is just fascinating because, you know, you think of coordination, you think on the defense, throwing it from the shortstop to the first baseman or maybe from the outfielder to the second baseman, but it's a lot more than that, too. It could even go to the batters. What do I mean by that? Well, one batter, I mean, we've seen it with all these stolen bases. I've mentioned it over and over again. While one batter, the batter may not get what he wants, the men on the bases, they're able to take advantage and get some stolen bases. And we're seeing the fruitions play, we're seeing the fruitions pay off with all these loaded bases. It's going to be ball number two for Andres. Let's ready. Throws. Good, man. Look good, bud. Fastball is going to be ball number three. So that statistic I mentioned where he had a three and out, where he had a 3-0, looks like we're going to have back-to-back. Back-to-back three and O's for Nicholas. Is he going to be able to put a strike up on the board? We're about to find out. As he throws, looks to be a fastball. And indeed he is not. Back-to-back -back three and outs, and that's going to put the USA back up top with another run. Team USA retakes the lead 6-5. to five. Frank Noto able to make it all the way around with three out of the four just coming off of walks from his teammates. When I talk about coordination, that's what I'm talking about. It's not just on the defense. Now Charles Modling is now up to the plate. It's going to go for ball number one. Ready. Deals. Fastball. Ball number two. And it's, we're going back to what we said before. He's throwing the ball too high. He's throwing it way too high. He just has to lower, if he could just lower the trajectory right there and at least force the batter to at least hit the ball and then put the put the game in the hands of the defense, then maybe we could get something happening. But right now he keeps throwing that ball too high and that's just going to keep getting ball after ball after ball. I mean, we're looking at seven, we're looking at eight straight balls right now for Nicholas. Excuse me, 10 straight balls. May I remind you, those 10 straight balls are without a strike. Got it. As it seems like I'm going to bite my words, we finally get the first strike in about three battings. That's going to be strike number one. Nicholas ready. Throws a fastball. Strike number two. So Nicholas getting his footing. He's forcing these batters now to start swinging. That's what he needs to do. He either needs to get his bat. He either needs to get these batters. Like for example, he needs to get Charles right here to either force the swing, or he needs to get Charles to at least force a fly out or a pop out and put the game in the defense's hands but he's unable to do that as we have the fourth walk for Team USA and that's going to allow for another run putting Team USA now up by two runs as seems the coach the rest of the team is going to go up to the pitcher's mound to talk to Nicholas it seems like Nicholas is heading off to the sidelines, and it looks like we're going to have a pitching change. So, we'll be right back.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So like I mentioned, we have our second pitching change of the night. This coming from Team Canada. So number 18, the DH, Kalsman Scheiss, is now up to the plate. Relieving Nicholas. Relieving Nicholas, excuse me. We're ready to get the game back going. So now up to the plate for Team USA is going to be number 55, Riley Qualey. Riley's had a decent, I mean, he, decent game so far. He managed to get all the way up to second base. However, his last inning coming to third inning was a strikeout. So let's see if he can get back going as Kalsman gets ready. Throws the curveball, but he's going to go for the ball. It's going to be strike number one. Riley wants to join the rest of his teammates that make up that seven-run score so far. And that's going to go all the way to right. It's going to be out number one. However, at the cost of Riley able to get to the first baseman, but they were able to prevent Team USA putting another run on the board. Back to the top of the order for Team USA, Dwayne Cartwright, number 23. So Ty was denied the run that time. Meanwhile, Riley was able to get the single. So right now we have loaded a situation of loaded bases as Kalsman throws the curveball. But right now we have a situation of loaded bases once again. Now, Kalsman is being put in a tricky situation right here because he's basically being thrust into the fire center. It's going to be thrown all the way to second. And that's going to be what? Okay. Well, we have a lot to unpack there, folks. What looked to be a potential catch was all for now, as that now puts Team USA up to nine runs in the game. Boy, imagine if he was, imagine if the shortstop was able to get that catch. That would put them at two outs on the night. But we did get a two in that play. That was just an added two on the runs and not an extra out. Kalsman deals. It's going to go a little pop-up. It's going to be a foul ball. So Tyler Jones is now back up to the plate after that foul ball. As Kalsman gets ready, deals, throws the curve, drops it. As all the basemen go back to their bases. Kalsman gets ready. Fastball, going to be strike number one. So it's actually two strikes on the board for Tyler Jones. Let's see if Kalsman can get the strike out right here. Looks behind. Throws the curve, that's going to be a foul ball.
Tyler Jones throws the curve. It's going to be for the third ball for Tyler Jones. So the count, so we have a full count right now. Three balls, two strikes. What's the outcome going to be after this pitch? We're about to find out as he throws the fastball and is going to go all the way to the right side of the field. He dives, but he misses. And that's going to go for the single for Tyler Jones. And now up to the plate, number 44, David Alvarez. Once again, we are in a situation of loaded bases right now. Throws a curve ball. It's going to go for ball number one. See if he can change it up here. Cause a strike. And there's a time. Deals, throws the fast ball, and that's going to go for a foul ball. <laughs> Pitching now is Kalsman Scheiss. He was brought in in relief of Nicholas earlier in the inning. He throws the curve ball, and that's going to go towards left field. That's going to put up another one for the U.S. And another one. Can we get three in a row? We are not, but we do get two in a row with David Alvarez able to get to second base. Tyler Jones able to get to third base. And now we have double-digit runs for Team USA. And once again, Team USA has a wide margin ahead of Canada. And it seems like we're going to have another pitcher change. We'll be right back. No warm-up for uh, our pitcher over here as he's just going straight into the fire. It's going to be strike number one, strike number two. Deals? batter is number 19, Carter McCormick, the first baseman. Throws the slider, drops it, but no damage is done. So what could have been catastrophic managed to be relatively mitigated for the most part. Halsman Scheiss is still the pitcher. He throws the fastball, and that's going to go all the way to center. Will this be an easy catch? And it will. Can they get the double play? And they do not. But they still manage to score another run. So they managed to get one out on the fly out, but at the cost of allowing another run on the game, bringing the score now up to 12 for Team USA. Canada Five. Five.
So Callsman, at least he has a little less crowd. So the diamond's a little less crowded as it was than it was earlier. Only one man on second base. That can change all here with Frank Noto now up to the plate. It's ready. Curveball drops it. But no damage is done. Seeing a lot of seeing a lot of these curveballs just dropping to the ground. And I mean so far the damage has been next to none, but I mean how lucky are they going to get? He throws a fastball, and that's going to go towards the right field. He's going to throw it to the first baseman. Is he going to get in time? And indeed he does. Close, but no cigar for Frank Noto. And that's going to bring us to the top of the sixth inning right after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are now at the top of the sixth inning. The score is Team USA has a 7-1 lead over Canada with 12 runs to Canada's five. As we get ready for the top of the sixth inning. A lot has happened since the start of this ball game. We've already had two pitching changes, one per team. We've had a five-run lead. That all changed in one inning, and now we're at a seven-run lead as throws, as throws a fastball. It's going to be ball number one. But a lot has changed. I mean, for the first, I'd say, three to four innings, it seemed like it was going to be status, status quo. Team USA was going to get away with it. And then Canada comes back in the top of the fourth with five runs in a row that's going to be strike number one on that fastball and then team usa responds two innings later by putting up nearly seven runs in one inning so it's a fastball and that's going to go looks like it's going to be a catcher fly out Team USA was excited about that one. <laughs> now 
Tyler Jones is up to the plate. Throws a fastball. That's going to go for strike number one for Tyler. Know what throws the curve? It's dropped, but no damage is done. Tyler has not had luck so far on the batting plate so far this game. Every single time he's managed all but one, he's been out to the plate. It's all been out. So it's going to be for strike number two. But like I mentioned, all but one of his four bats have ended with him being out. The only one that didn't coming in the last inning where he managed to get up to second base. Fastball is thrown. Swing and a miss. Strike out. Putting the first out on the second out on the board already for Canada. So now David Alvarez will step up to the plate. Try to change the fortunes of this team. Strike number one. Excuse me, this is Logan McDonald. As the fastball is thrown, that's going to go for strike number two. So back to back strikes already for Logan. Noah's doing a really good job of forcing these patters to have to swing the ball. Ready back to back strikes. Can he make it three in a row? No, he can. That's going to be ball number one. That's going to be a foul ball. For that little, so that going on, Noah gets ready to deal once more. Throws the curve. He's going to go for ball number two. So back to back strikes are then followed up by back to back balls, with the count being 2 2. Noah throws the fastball. What a cannon of a fastball, but that's going to be the result and a full count. So now this next pitch is going to go off of the 3-2. Is it going to result in a walk or is it going to result in a strikeout or something else? We're about to find out as he throws the fastball that's going to go all the way to the first baseman. And he, that is going to, or excuse me, it's going to result in a foul ball. So what could have been a big play ended up resulting in nothing but a foul ball. So we're going to have to run that all back once more. So once again, we are at a full count, 3-2. What's going to be the end result of this pitch? We're about to find out. Throws the fastball, and that's going to be a strikeout, and that's going to do it for the top of the sixth inning. We'll be right back with the bottom of the six. Ladies and gentlemen, turns out this is actually the end of the game. Ending at the top of the six. So ladies and gentlemen, 
Street. Wait for our PA announcer Definitely to make. Thank you for coming to the first game of World Cup to the Polynesian. And tomorrow here in the stadium, the first game will be at 11 o'clock. Team Canada, 15U versus Team Jamaica. See you then.